All right, let's take a look at a Fourier series problem. In this particular problem, we are going to find the Fourier series of a continuous time signal on an interval. So what do I mean by that? Usually we think of using the Fourier series to represent a periodic continuous time signal for all time, and that's what it typically does. However, if you have a continuous time signal that's not periodic, you can choose an interval and find the Fourier series expansion on that interval, and then that Fourier series representation will be periodic with whatever interval you choose. So it won't represent the signal for all time, but you can find a Fourier series representation of a signal on a particular kind of chunk of time. So, so let's work a particular example of that. Here is the signal x of t that we'll be working with. Here is what x of t looks like. It's this decaying exponential. Alpha is a real valued number greater than zero. So as time gets large, this is decaying to zero. As time goes to minus infinity, this is kind of blowing up and getting large. That is e to the minus alpha t. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the Fourier series representation of this signal on the interval 0 to 10. So for t equals 0 to 10. We'll then have a representation for this signal in terms of a Fourier series on the interval. Obviously outside of 0 and 10, this Fourier series expansion will repeat periodically, which the original signal does not, but we'll still have a nice representation of the signal on that particular interval. Since we're talking about a period of time that is 10 seconds long, when we're done, or for the math that we'll be doing, that basically means that our period is 10. So our fundamental period of the Fourier series representation will be 10 seconds, which means its fundamental frequency is 1 over t, or 1 tenth. So let's go ahead and do the computation. Here is the equation that we use in general for the um, you know, complex Fourier series coefficients. What do we do? We have 1 over t out front, and then we project x of t onto e to the minus j 2 pi r f naught t, and we integrate over one full period of the signal. In this case, the period is 0 to 10. So that is the integral that we need to evaluate. And we can go ahead and start plugging in the particular values of this problem. Capital T is 10. X of T is e to the minus alpha T. And then we still have our e to the minus j 2 pi r f naught T. The next few steps really just involve, you know, quite a bit of algebra and calculus. So we'll go ahead and work through those steps. What would we like to do? I think I'm going to go ahead and combine these two exponentials into a single exponential with this single argument. So just using the property of exponentials, when you multiply them, you add their arguments. So both of these have a negative sign out front. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out that negative sign right there, and then just add j2 pi r f naught, and add the alpha and pull the t, which they both have a common t here, right? So I'll go ahead and pull the t out to the right, because now I need to do the integral, and this is written very nicely in terms of what the integral is. This looks like, you know, e to the beta t dt that I need to integrate, which is an easy integral to do. e to the beta t, when I integrate that, it's e to the beta t divided by beta. So I just need to bring this whole kind of mess down into the denominator when I actually work the integral. So I can put that down there. There's the minus j 2 pi r f naught. So that is the integral, but I need to now evaluate it at times t equals 10 and 0, right? That's what we have to do after we do the integration. So now I need to evaluate this quantity at time t equals 10 minus time t equals 0. So let's go ahead and plug that in. What did I do here? I, I factored this minus sign and put it right there in front of the 10. That's how I ended up with this minus sign right there. And now I'm ready to evaluate at the two points of time. When t equals 10, I get a minus 10 right here. And then I subtract off this value evalu evaluated at t equals 0. e to the 0 is 1, so that's why I have a minus 1 right here. All right, the next few steps are just kind of manipulating this into kind of a nice form. One thing to note, since our fundamental frequency is 1 over 10, this 10 and this 1 over 10 are going to cancel and simplify just a little bit here on the uh, next slide. Another thing that I'm going to do is since I have a minus out front, I can go ahead and flip this subtraction and get rid of that minus sign. So let's do some of those algebraic steps. So I've kind of flipped the subtraction and got rid of one of those negative signs. 
I can go ahead and use the fact that F0 is 1 over 10 to simplify that 10 factor as well to give me this. So I didn't change the denominator at all between these steps, but I did go ahead and let this 10 multiply through that 1 over 10. And I've gone ahead and split up the exponentials just a little bit. My personal preference, again, how you exactly come up with your final answer here, your form might be a little bit different, but I kind of like where this is going. And this is, you know, what I think is fairly simplified. So I'm going to go ahead and call that my final answer for the Fourier series coefficients, the dr. Note, our answer has r in it, and it should. We are trying to compute a general expression for the rth coefficient, so my final answer is going to have an r in it that I can now evaluate for different values of r. What is the final Fourier series representation? So here is just the standard, you know, complex exponential Fourier series equation. x of t can be written as this infinite sum of complex numbers times e to the j 2 pi r f naught t. The whole point of the math we just did was to figure out what is this sequence of numbers dr, and now we know exactly what that is. So I can go ahead and plug in that x of t is equal to Here's our expression for the drs times e to the minus j 2 pi rt over 10. So I went ahead and replaced the f naught with 1 over 10, the value that it's equal to in this particular problem, because I'm trying to find the expansion on the interval from 0 to 10. So that's my final answer. That is the Fourier series representation that we were looking for. Let's go ahead and make some plots, though. Obviously, I can't do an infinite summation but I can look at kind of these finite summations as a function of capital N. So this equation right here that I just now wrote down is identical to the equation in the green box, except I now have finite limits on these summation. And what I can do now is I can make some plots for different values of N. So just for the heck of it, I chose N equals 3, N equals 10, and N equals 50. And we can take a look at what this time domain signal looks like for these different values of N and how it compares to the original signal, the continuous time signal that we started with. So let's go ahead and do that here. Here is what the Fourier series expansion looks like for n equals 3. So this red curve right here is the Fourier series expansion on the interval 0 to 10 for just having those, um, I guess, not or seven terms in the sum. If you go from minus 3 to 3, that is a total of seven terms. On the interval 0 to 10, you can see that the red line approximates the blue line, which was our original starting signal. And it should. That was the whole point to finding the expansion on this interval. However, since n is kind of a low number, it's not a great representation. It kind of wobbles around quite a bit. If we add more terms to our sum, though, here is the representation for n equals 10. So this is summing from n equals minus 10 to 10, so that's 21 total terms, quite a, a bit more terms in our sum. Now the representation on this interval is looking pretty good. There's still some wobble there, but in terms of representing the original x of t accurately, this is a more accurate representation. And then if I go to n equals 50, now things are starting to look really good. The expansion on this interval, there's almost no mismatch outside of the interval this Fourier series expansion is periodic, which we knew it would be. Anytime I find a Fourier series representation, the representation itself is a periodic signal. For this example, we're trying to find the representation just on this interval that we just arbitrarily chose. I could have chose to do it between, you know, minus 5 and 0, or 0 to 2. I happen to do 0 to 10, so it will be a periodic signal with a period of 10 seconds. Also note right here that on these kind of these edges, we get the Gibbs phenomenon that we always see in problems like this, this kind of ringing and this oscillating. Obviously, this is not the Fourier series expansion in total because I can't do the sum for an infinite number of terms. N is only 50 right here, but that's still a fairly large number of terms in the summation. So we can still kind of see what the final Fourier series expansion looks like. So that's it for now. That was kind of a quick example of how to find the Fourier series representation of a signal on an interval, which you can do for any continuous time signal. You'll always end up with a periodic expansion that has a period that is equal to the interval you chose. In some ways, this doesn't make sense because, hey, this wasn't a periodic signal to begin with. So outside of that interval, I don't match the original signal at all. 
However, if you're trying to find a representation just on a particular part of time, this is still kind of a handy technique to use. Thanks for watching.